her children are also professors. So you can imagine the conversation around the around the dinner table. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. One of her sons, Kwabna, is an English uh, 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 professor in 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 in. in, in you, you see, she didn't steal the contract and give it to her relatives. She could have done that. The setting up of the Cape Coast uh, uh, Hospital. Eh? She could have distributed everything from uh, 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 what do you call it? From bringing sun to the site. To she didn't do that. So the Cape Coast Hospital is sitting. The, the, the Cape Coast Medical School is sitting there, done, producing graduates who might be attending to 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 one of the MPP ministers who fall sick just before they transport them out of the country. Right? When Professor Jenana Opokwajima got to the Ministry of Education, assuming she sat there and did nothing, Amma mentioned the, the, the uh, uh, e-blocks. They are sitting there. She didn't do soul sourcing and give it to her relatives. Did she do that? So because of that, it's sitting there. Right? And people's children will go there. Am I lying? She also didn't print past questions eh, for 65 million cities. She didn't do that and give it to a party apparatchiks. She rather made sure that the children were studying and the, and the statistics bear her out. But you see, you should understand what, where Afenio Makin was really trying to go when he was talking about succession. He was talking about four years hence and trying to tell us that, trying to tell the people of Ghana that don't vote for the NDC because, for use of a better word, when President Mahama is going in four years' time, they will bring a geriatric. Well, you are the people who are educating us that we should make sure people of a certain age never become president. Because we are living one. Right? One that sits in the Flagstaff house. And when the country is defrauded, he says he wasn't aware. One that sits in the Flagstaff house, well, doesn't sit, decides to use our money to fly in private jets all over the world, sleep in 22,000 pound hotels. And I am not sure whether that those things are functions of geriatricism or not. So in a nutshell, I have a piece of advice for Afenio Maki. Cry your own cry. You have a choice of people who just got married for the sake of becoming vice president. You have the sake of people who have done revenue assurance for eight years uh, uh, so that they can contribute money to Baumia's kitty. We know them. You, all, you have uh, uh, another you know, very accomplished elder statesman lady in Fremont, Sarah Parry, who is at, uh, attending every cookathon simply to make herself um, uh, relevant. Right? Choose any of them. Choose anybody. You can choose Apostle Pokunina, who himself qualifies for geriatricism. Okay? Choose anybody you want. But show up. Just show up on December 7. Because what you are going to do is you are going to go. It's an exercise that needs to be had by the people of Ghana. We need to conduct that plebiscite. So that the ordinary people of this country can vote out the partitions. You are going. So it doesn't matter who we present. Don't worry. Even if the face of the NDC, uh, 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 what do you call it, ballot is blank, Ghanaians will vote for blank. Because what we have seen in the last eight years defies all logic, it defies belief. Even if you went to sleep and you had the worst nightmare, you would never have believed that in this country,
people like an operator will supervise the uh, ministry of finance and you will go to the bank and money that you yourself have put there they'll tell you they can't give it to you before you met Ken Ofriata, did you know that if you had money in the bank, it wasn't safe? Hmm. So, what I would tell Afenio Makin is, my brother, follow your own path. And to all the people that I can give advice, if you have something to do, or if you have minutes to spare, don't spend those minutes listening to uh, Afenio Makin. It will not bring you any edification, whether it's intellectual, spiritual, uh, or, or otherwise. On Kenyan That's all. Thank you, thank you. Uh, concluding yes, the conversation on that second topic, just two or three messages. This one is from Habib Bantu. Says a good morning uh, to your panelists. Uh, uh, if Prof. As GM Vice Pre Vice today, if Prof. Was GM's Vice president today women shall never ever pay sanitary pad tax john and jay shall allow all the way there's also this one says i have applauded ama hartley ama proud hartley tell her she is good um more of the messages that are coming in this one so now please ask the energetic lady in the studio if she has heard of the two girls who were molested and subjected to sexual abuse by the uncle even to the point where Karen majority majority leader had to send national security guards to aid a lawyer in his chambers to harass the kids in the school. This same Afonyo Makin is defending the pedophile in court. Okay, uh, this is someone who clearly knows a lot about an issue that is drawing our attention to. Um, and this one says, um, I never knew Chumbuafo is one of my uncle, only today. Thank you, uncle. My mother, my mother's grand, grandmother, or oh, I only kept him from a breath to in Sawam or to a plus. Okay, thank you. Says, please don't mind the majority leader. Maybe he is born by a uh, spirit, but not a woman. His speech is an insult to all women in Ghana. And thank you very much for sending that message. Uh, this one, okay, says, please tell Honorable Mutala that the Auditor General's contract has been extended to March 7, 2025. James in Kumasi sent that one. Yeah. Is he on contract? Yeah. Moses Chinyo says, I would prefer to vote for Jenana than uh, Baumia. So there are many comments you're sending to us, but I have about 10 minutes to go. Um, there's one issue that perhaps uh, that we will just, the, the third topic that has to do with the discussion on what happened really what really caused the death of john kuma um two minutes each i'll start from engineer even though you just landed you know i don't want to broach that topic i'll tell you why a family is grieving mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, i also happen to know john kuma mm. very well um he's one of the more he was one of the more demure and intellectually very sound people even though he had the wrong address i don't want to remember him for the conjecture around uh, his unfortunate demise i want to remember him like somebody i knew that i could sit here with and we could talk politics he will outline his views from where he comes from i will outline my views from where, he, where i come from and we will get up shake hands give each other a hug and and and, and walk out you know uh, incidentally i happen to have been the last ndc person who actually had a debate with him in the studios of city fm was over E. Levy, and he mentioned to me at the time that I wasn't feeling well. I didn't know um, what it was because we never quite uh, um, got there. So may he rest in peace. May his memory bring joy um, to the people of Ejisu. Uh, May God himself comfort his widow 
and his six children, who are six young children who are unfortunately going to grow up without the influence of such a brilliant man. And John Kuma, if you know him, he was an absolutely brilliant uh, um, um, person. I, and you know, all of us are fathers here. Of, of, of young children. The last thing that you pray God is not to leave your children in their formative years. Because there's a saying in G that the JB way the BT has a day that the easier. All the people will come there and promise heaven for your children because you are gone after you are buried and the uh, Two weeks pass, you won't see anybody again. You are left with your mother to struggle. It's it's the time on a tradition. So all the people saying all the things they are saying, please stop. Because there is a family that is grieving. Stop the conjecture. Right? And if you have any evidence that any untoward thing had been done, and there's a lawyer here, go to the police. They are the best people to solve any crime if any such thing has happened. Don't aggravate the pain of a family that have lost a patriarch to such very unfortunate circumstances. And having said that, let me just remind us all that the vision of President Mahama was making our health installations better making treatment plans better, making specialized institutions that take care of certain um, types of diseases and others better. Building more district hospitals, upgrading all kinds of health installations so that they can take care of it. Because you see, no matter how much money you have, and I say this in all sincerity, we all get sick. No matter how much money you have, you may not have the time to leave the country. Because there are certain illnesses that when you get it, even the aircraft won't take you. Okay. The aircraft will not take you because they are liable if you die on their air aircraft. So our first recourse is let's make our hospitals better so that they can triage better so that they can deal with sudden coronary issues. Because, uh, um, Senator, if you allow me, what kills people most in this country is accidents and sudden cardiac issues. The life expectancy of a Ghanaian male is 62 years. The life expectancy of a Ghanaian female is 67 years. Most of us, especially the males, at a certain point in time, you have hypertension. If it is unchecked, it branches into all other things. Okay. So if you get to the hospital and you are triaged better, chances are somebody will save your life until the specialist doctors get there. Okay, okay. Uh, I have to move on to Comrade. Well, I, I have... A special relationship with, with, or I had a special relationship with John. John and I went to Legon the same year. It was me, yes, it was me, John, Samson Ladia, Yenini, Shamima, Muslim. These are just known faces. But I was in the same hall with John, we were in Legon Hall. And uh, we were elected to the Legon Hall Congress the same day. And we were also elected into General Assembly of Legon Hall the same day. 
And I think prior to that, we were the two people for the first time elected two consecutive times to represent the Congress and also the General Assembly. Uh, I, I shared a lot with John on student politics. We are virtually on the same line, except that when there was a debating club in Lagos, for we constituted a debating club. I debated him, and he was with Bernard Avila. Bernard Avila was a one-year junior on the American criminal invasion of Iraq. And I remember that was in 1999. That was our first year, actually, when I was anti the invasion. And no, my second year in 2000. That was, I was anti the invasion, and they were for the invasion. That was the first time we engaged in an intellectual you know, debate together. When I led a demonstration in Legon, that was the first time Legon held a student organized demonstration. And sometimes you organize demonstration and it gets out of hand. You, are, you no longer control it. And the demonstration was as a result of, you know, lack of certain basic amenities that the, the hall was supposed to provide. And when the demonstration was getting out of hand, I remember from Legon Hall to Radio Universe, I was a bit scared, to be very honest, because it, it became very rowdy. John indeed, indeed, you know, stick his neck out to support the demonstration. The only place I parted with John was when I was impeaching my JCR president for squandering students, man. And the gentleman happened to be their friend. You know, they were friends, actually. And Lloyd like, Pebu was a lawyer to Poison, and Agalga was my lawyer. We were in court for one year. That was where I parted ways with, with John because I was impeaching their friend, you know. We contested SRC elections together. And I remember he was contesting with a gentleman called Abebe. Abebe was a very, she was a like girl's, girl's guy. So John was the candidate Abebe. He's now in the US Army. So everywhere we went, when it got to John's turn to address students, he said, once again, it's John Kuma and Abebe. And any time he sees me, he says, the name is not Mutala, the name is Muritala. But I remember when we were in court when I was impeaching their friend. Like people would address me as the plaintiff, as Ibrahim Mutala, and I say, no, my lord, the name is not Mutala, it's Muritala. So even in parliament, people didn't understand. Any, any time he sees me, he says, the name is once the name is not Mutala, it's Muritala. And I would say, once again, John Kumaina, baby, this is how close we were. And I remember when we both wanted to contest for Nook's presidency in Kumasi, I was coming from Legon, he was coming from Legon, Dr. Omani was also coming from Legon because he had contested the previous year and lost. So Legon were presenting three candidates and I called them to a meeting and insisted that we could not have three candidates because if we did so, Legon was not going to get it. And the argument was that because Omani, when he contested, he was a Balika science student on campus. By the following year, he had moved to medical school, Kolebu, and at that time they were still part of extension of the University of Ghana. So I felt that we should allow him to contest because he contested the previous year. John refused and that was uh, Bernard Mona was coming from the University of Cape Coast. I mean, these are just long this. And we have been very good friends, to be very honest with you. Very, very good friends. I've debated him a couple of, the last time we debated was on, on Focus, uh, what's the name, uh, GTV. They have a program the long Wednesday. So he's been a very, very good friend of mine. One thing I can corroborate, John was a very sharp guy, very, very intelligent. One thing that I always say any time I think about John was, when we wanted to investigate our SRC president for spending students' money at the General Assembly, John was the one who rose and proposed me. And the words he used, and I've always said it is so encouraging. He said, look, Mutala is incorruptible. I think that he has the courage, he has the capacity to lead the investigation. And everybody agreed. I remember, this gentleman was also at General Assembly, uh, Samson Ladi. Samson was a General Assembly member by virtue of being the JCR president of Legon. So we have come a very long way. Now, for such a person, such a promising young guy, to die in the manner that he died, it is of tremendous worry to me as a person. Frankly, one thing I don't like about this has to do with the conduct of government. Dr. Baumia visited the house. On what basis did they invite the woman to come and have meetings with her? The rush with which the, the interview was done, I can't determine for the woman or the family. But I only feel it. And the last point I will make has to do with the children. 
All of us sitting here, our children are very young. I've always told people, as a Muslim, Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut, that every soul shall taste death. So I know at a point in time I will die. I have, it has never escaped me. And Sana, no day has ever passed without me thinking of the possibility of me dying. And, and it's part of Iman, it's part of faith as a Muslim. You should always think that you can die at any point in time. The qu question is when. Whether you are prepared or not, death doesn't care. It will not give you the time to prepare and say, this is the time I want to die. It can come at any time. More so when your kids are very young. We have seen families where people were very resourceful, died, and their children and their wife became destitute. We have seen that. We have seen families where children, the, the, the father was everything, died, and the family will hijack everything and the children suffer. So it is our prayer that we would want to leave this world at a time when we can be, you know, as humans. God is God who nurtures children, who protects children, who, who provides protection for children. However, as humans, we always think that, no, my children should be at a certain level before I, I pass on. You can determine that. So I am particularly worried, and I can understand the, the wife is, is grieving with the family, the mother. Look, and I'll conclude on this. When I lost my mother, in the year 2015, I was very close to my mom and those who know the relationship I had with my mom. I was crying uncontrollably and it took me almost months every morning because my mom used to call me after Fajr prayer, that is the dawn prayer. Every Fajr prayer my mom would call me, even sometimes when my phone is off. The moment I'm on the phone somewhere around 8, the first call that would come would be that of my mom. So I would have realized that she was trying to call me and she wasn't. When I lost my mom, I was so confused. And I had a discussion with somebody, a friend who was trying to console me. And I said, I don't think that anything is more painful than losing your mother. And that person had lost the wife. I said, I'm going to tell her, I understand. I lost my mom, I lost my wife. Nothing is more hateful than losing a spouse. Either you lose your wife or you lose your husband. So, I mean, with the experience I have had losing my mother, you know, and my father, and someone who experienced both, telling me that nothing is more hateful, painful than losing your spouse. Because your spouse knows you more than any other person who knows you. So I can imagine what the woman will be going through. And I think that frankly, the reason why I would demand for proper investigation to be done in this matter is because of the allegations and the stories surrounding the death. Not just because of him, not just because of him, but if in, indeed there were hands in it, it's Allah who, did, who causes death. As Muslims, that's why in Muslim, when someone they say, leave it. However, because he was a public figure and because there have been serious or serious allegations, and those allegations are coming from people who were closer to him, I think that it will be the need for us to establish whether indeed someone had hands in it. And for me, that is the only thing I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 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 I think my two senior brothers have said it all. Uh, want to wish John Kuma, uh, say, I think he should rest in peace. We want to extend my, condol my condolences to his family. I've been really appalled by the manner in which uh, this issue has been handled by, by, by the media, largely uh, people who have, who have gone on there and said, uh, I, have to, I have to mention him, but I think this, this, this was uh, then all the controversy uh, started with uh, Captain Smart's other than what he said, you, know, you understand. And uh, my position uh, is essentially like what my sister here uh, uh, said. We have values. You see, we have principles. In Ghana, as when somebody passes, this is not how we treat. We will, we, will, we will handle it. If you think that there is any element of criminality uh, concerning uh, the circumstances surrounding his death, there, there, there's a proper thing to do. The proper thing is not to go on radio and make serious allegations. So if you think uh, there's any form of untoward uh, activity uh, leading to his past, go to the police. Like, you don't go on air when he has family grieving and say all oh, oh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the kind of things they said. I don't know who, who has also pushed the wife to be granting interviews. Uh, John Kuma has family that loves him. and respond to needless provocation. 
Uh, you, you know, I, I, I think I've heard the criticisms being leveled against the woman. And see, once again, what Ama has been saying comes into focus. If the roles were reversed and a lady MB had died and people were speculating about the cause of the, uh, the death and the husband had come out to debunk it, who would be condemning the husband? No, I, I, I would have condemned the husband. No, we are always but, doing this to the women. No, but Why? It's just not, but, but, but he, right. uh, I, listen, uh, lawyer, uh, lawyer, no, I, I, I hate like to disagree him. with you on this matter. No, he hasn't but given the woman me. has every reason to come no, out and no, say, no, no, stop he, saying, because you don't know. She has told us, look, those who know, mm. know that John Kuma was not well. Okay. Okay? Those who know, know that he was not well. But when people are not well, they can come and put out their... Yeah. I haven't been well for two and a half years. Who knows? People haven't seen me. You haven't seen me for a long time. People see me, they say, why have you lost so much weight? If I had died, somebody would have come and said, some weight killed me. Mm. Yeah, but, but, uh, 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 see, another step, like, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have values. You understand? You also, we said, you're, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm an Ashanti man. And this is not how you handle it. It's the fact that they are peddling common of things can't justify why you the spouse you come out and then grant interviews there are ways of and 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 and, and i'm using the, the word spouse here because the same way if it was the other way around i remember my uncle's wife passed and the number of allegations and my uncle couldn't he as in you would be as in, you would look at differently in kumasi if you if, even for a man to come out and be and be answering to some of these things you, 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 so we have values yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand. If you think you need to answer, as yes, you can find some spokesperson or somebody. But, but at the end of the day, and, and I don't even go as far as to say that he's a public figure. A human being has passed. You yeah, understand? We have and and and, and we, we have values. We have family. He has, he has family and all. And I, I, I think it is gross disrespect to the family and to himself. You understand what it stands for? With all this unnecessary noise going on in the media. So for me, as, in, uh, as I said in, in our from last week. I feel that the police ha should have invited, if they have not done it already, Captain Smart to answer questions. I've seen him to me his age also go on there. I understand he's going to do some press conference. All those things must stop. Because there are family members who are grieving. If you think you have any information, if you think you have any information, do it the right way. Go quietly to the police. Let the police have their own investigation. And, and just to, as in to end, once again, to extend my condolences to the family of a drunk man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's this one from Izinako Jojo who says that people we are dealing with were and are simply unfit to lead any society in this 21st century. And then a request to Ama, please Ama, educate Maurice Ampau too. <laughs> <laughs> that one, you will succeed. Uh -huh. Please. Yeah, <laughs> you will succeed. <laughs> And watch and um, watch WWE. I won't advise you to engage in John Kuma's past pastime, but watch. No, 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 John Kuma. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, um, no, 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 you know, uh, uh, comrade is comrade is fasting. Let's <laughs> let's, 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 let's let's respond the fast. We we'll talk after. I'll give you a for Please, 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 close for me. I mean, I I also have to add, you know, my voice to all of us who are, you know, sending our condolences to the family, to the wife, to the kids, you know, even to the extended family. Loss is painful fact but I think young loss is just you know on another level and for somebody so promising I mean, we've had all the you know um, glowing tributes that have even across this table you know, from the people who know him and who experience him perhaps more than the rest of us so clear and I've had you know others say even more glowing things about you know him and 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 to lose him so young you know um, it's it's sad it's 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 terrible I would say that all the noise after the death you know could have been managed better could have been managed better I hear um, lawyers say that my colleagues 
the media fraternity should be invited for questioning and all of that. I hear, I hear all that. I think that we could have managed it, you know, way, 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 way better than we did. But let's mm. also be reminded that it started from his own aid. You understand what I'm saying? Like it started from his own aid, which then escalated into the media and therefore pushed a grieving widow into a radio station and, and things like that. We, we can do better. I think that we, and this is a difficult one because let's not forget that in the mix is grief. You know, if it were about um, some corporate issue that has been mishandled, then you can call people out and, you know, chastise them for how. But this is about grief. And as we sit here, I don't know how I perhaps would have acted in these circumstances. I don't know until it happens to me. Okay. So I'm being very careful in how, you know, I speak and I address the issue. Because well, it's grief. It's grief. And sometimes, no matter how well behaved you think you are, or how well mannered and how logical you think you are, something can shake your foundation and make you do things that perhaps ordinarily you may not have done. And so I'm extending, you know, that humanity to all the players involved. But a lot has been said already about how we could have done better. Perhaps it would be a time to pause, take stock, listen, and for the sake of the man that, you know, we loved, let me use that word, for the sake of the man that we loved, you know, for him, for his sake, perhaps do things a little differently. Like lawyer said, there are avenues of redress, even if, you know, I think that as a country, sometimes we don't appreciate and celebrate enough. And how, how better do you honor somebody than in death? If you can't honor the person in life, in death, honor. Give him his due. So for that sake, for traditional reasons, for cultural reasons, for humanity's sake, you know, and just for basic respect for life, because life is precious. It's a precious, precious thing. For basic respect for life, I would ask all, you know, um, parties involved to calm down, rethink, and come again. If there's, you know, ill done in any shape, you know, form, we will find out. But if it's just sickness, then please, I mean, let, let's let it go. And also to just say that, John Kuma, wherever you are, may God be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, our condolences continue to go to the family of the late John Kuma. And, of course, Ramadan, Ramadan Karim to our Muslim brothers. Honorable uh, Mutala did it fantastically from the beginning. I don't know what to say. I just, what I can say is that we pray that your sacrifice of fast yield the fruits you are looking for. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's Nana Yawasi, David, David's dad. So, also to wish the family. Um, Condolences. I used to call him Bobby Satan. Yeah, Bobby. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, a few things to do. Those of you who went to Because I did not go to actual school. A few things to do. I don't know if she responds the same way as a husband always does. One of the things that I've constantly had with when Mr. Pratt is sitting here, you say a happy belated birthday or a happy birthday. Then he, he fights back immediately. He doesn't like he doesn't like to hear that at all. I understand uh, Mrs. Pratt celebrated her birthday this week. Yeah. So a belated happy birthday to her. Oh, fantastic. Oh. Then that's a that's a huge so beautiful. Huge one. Doesn't change. Doesn't change, change the single one. day. Your yeah. mom has never changed. Yes. 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 In fact, ever since I started meeting, her, yes. <laughs> same face. Nothing has changed. Mm. So, a belated happy birthday to you. And very, of course, a belated... very, very strong. Yeah. Mm. Mm. 
We, we pray for you many, to, you many, many healthy years ahead of Come you. Come with Chrissy Price, right? <laughs> <laughs> for that long time. You know what? When she's around, yeah. when she's around, yeah. he's no Chrissy there. <laughs> <laughs> you see them together. So let much. me also say a uh, uh, belated happy birthday to Mrs. Jane Agbemava, loyal, uh, wife of lawyer Lipli Agbemava. Uh, belated happy birthday to you uh, happy birthday to Kosi Jokoto one of my newly found friends and say uh, a good, good good afternoon and a big thank you to W and retired James Gano probably known as Jokololo is my uncle and to Togbe Dokolo uh, a big th thank you for joining us on the show today it's a matter of all talk show that Alaji and Alaji let me say a big thank you to my panelists for today start from my right uh, engineer today I've decided to call him engineer Chumbuafo number two. That's the name I'm calling him by today. Yes. Yes. He's not recognized as the original. There are three of us. There's one, two, and three. Yes, yes. So he's number two. And then number one is there. The number one is the dad. And then number three is your younger brother, right? Yes. So Yes. That is things you always you ask know, to me. If you say engineer Chumbo, I Every Saturday go. morning, uh, my family is allergy and allergy time. Uh, <laughs> you, you can't break my mom's concentration, can't break my dad's that concentration, and my brother and my sister are watching from their homes. So the problem to that is to be done. We have to bring it to a close. A big thank you to Amar Pratt, who is general manager of Pan African Television. A big thank you to Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohamed, who is member of parliament for Tamale Central, and of course, lawyer Andrew Apia Dankwa who is a member of the movement for change. We are back same time next week with another edition.